Hey, sixth graders, when it comes time to graph for the attack of the bacterial lab, um, this video should give you some directions. So if you're down on the graphing section of the lab report, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, it says your task is to pick at least two of the pieces of data that you tracked and graph it. You'll need to decide the following. Which two pieces of data make sense? What's going on the x and the y axis? Which is better, a line or a bar? And then making sure that you've got a descriptive title, you've got an x and y axis titles in there, and you've got units. We're going to do this in sheets and then eventually copy it over to your Google Doc. So by now, you've probably already done the practice exercise where you made two Google uh, Sheets graphs, one bar graph and one line graph, and you submitted that as a classwork and homework assignment. So now we're going to actually be putting those skills to use. So the data that we're talking about is the measurements that you took in your days of observations, right, on day three, four, five, and six. <clears throat> so we tracked how much the bacteria was growing on day three, four, five, and six. We tracked three different colonies on those four days, three, four, five, and six. Um, so that would be the data that we're going to graph. We're going to look at as time progressed as the day that the bacteria were growing for, as that changed, as that progressed, how much did they grow each day? Did they grow a lot? Did they grow a little bit? Did they stay about the same size? Did they grow really big in the last two days, right? So the way that we're going to do that, what I've provided for you for this lab, is in this data table setup, I gave you a data table that has all of this information here. So days, three, four, five, and six. And actually right now, while we're live, I'm gonna change that to time and put day as the unit. Then we've got the size of the colony of the first one that you measured from all uh, four days, the second one that you measured from all four days, and the third one that you measured from all four days. Now, the instructions on the lab say that you only have to pick two sets of data. One is obviously gonna be the time, right? because we need to know what day of the week that this bacterial colony grew a little bit or a lot. So this is gonna be one of them. You can then pick if you wanna graph colony one, colony two, or colony three. If you want to, you can graph multiple of them in the same graph. So your job first and foremost is going to be to copy your data from this sheet into this document. So you're gonna take colony one, which is, you know, uh, you were looking at kind of, this is like your random one from the random location. And you're gonna put the three, or sorry, the four days of growth that you saw here. So the first day, it was zero, zero millimeters, maybe. The next day, it was one millimeter. The next day, it was four, and the next day, it was 10. I'm making this data up. Size of colony two, let's say it was also zero, and then it was two, and then it was 10, and then it was 20 where it got really big really quick. This one stayed zero, 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 and then got up to two. All right, so I've copied over all my data, and I copied it from these locations, right? Colony one on day three, day four, day five, and day six, then colony two, day three, day four, day five, and day six, and I copied it into here, right? Now I'm gonna pick, which of these do I wanna show? Size of colony three seems kind of boring, right? Very slow growth. Maybe I don't wanna graph that one because it's so slow and kind of boring. Maybe I want to show that one to show that some of them, some of the bacteria, for whatever reason, didn't grow very much, probably because we didn't collect very much bacteria initially when we sampled. So maybe I, this is one of the ones I do want to show. I could just do time and colony one, or time and colony two, etc., or I could graph them all. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you how to do two of them. So since we're looking at this against time, remember a bar graph is comparing different quantities side by side. And a line graph is to track as something changes. I think we're going to do a line graph. So I'm going to go insert, chart. Look at that, made a little line graph. Now, obviously, I will change some of this information here, right? Time, day is perfect. I actually want to say instead of size of colony one, I want to say what colony one was. Right? So colony one was um, the floor. So size of four colony, and that was before 
we wiped down the floor before antibacterial wipe in millimeters. And then we've got time day. So my title, I'm going to make it a little bit more detailed. I'm not just going to say size versus time. I'm going to say um, the growth rate of bacterial colony from middle school hallway before antibacterial wipe. There we go. I've made a graph. Right. There's an example for you. Now, if I wanted to get a little more complex, if I wanted to make a better graph, I want to show all three of these lines. Now, one way is I can make three separate graphs, right? I can highlight this, and I can highlight over here, right? So the way that I highlighted this one and this one separately is I held down Control, CTRL, while highlighting. So I'm going to click here, hold down Control, and keep holding down Control, and highlight over here if I wanted to make a graph of these two. So let's say I wanted to do all four. Highlight all four, insert, chart. Now look at that. That shows that all of them are increasing, but the red, they all increased pretty slowly at first, but then the red one really took off. The blue one kind of grew quickly, and the red one not much at all. And so I can then go and add in some more details. So my y-axis here is going to be, we can click on this, we need a title. So I'm going to go over here to customize, and I'm going to click on chart and axis titles. And I'm going to go over here and go to vertical axis title, which I want one, we always want one. And this is going to be colony size in millimeter. Now that has shown up. We've got the time of day, and then over here on the title, I'm going to change this to growth rate of three different bacterial colonies over a period of six days. Right, and then this here tells me that size of colony one, size of colony two, size of colony three. And what I can go back in and do is I can change what those are being called. I can change the series names. And there might be a better way of doing this, but I think the easiest way of changing the series names, and if somebody else has a better way, I'm going to come back out here, and I'm actually going to rename it right here in my data. So instead of size of colony 1, I'm going to call it uh, colony from middle school pod floor. Right, see how it changes it immediately over here? And then this one is going to be called Uh, lab table before antibacterial wipe column. And this one's going to be called lab table after wipe column. Right. And so that way, now what we've got is we've got a nice title that says growth rate of three different bacterial colonies over a period of six days. So we've got the time, six days here, it refers to the x-axis. The growth rate of three different bacterial colonies refers to the colony size over here. And then we've got this key here that tells us what the colors are. I'm actually going to come back to this one. And what I just realized is that my y-axis title here is too complicated. And it should not be this complicated. It should just say colony size or colony diameter if I wanted to be even more specific, right? I would pick one of those and do that. The reason why I'm going to keep that simple over here is because I tell you where it's from up here in the title. So what I'm measuring over here is the colony size, and what I'm measuring over here is the time of measured in days, and where it's measured from, where the colony size is measured from, is going to be included in the title. So I updated that previous one because I wanted to fix it and show you, hey, we all make mistakes, even Mr. Kalman. Um, so we should keep our y-axis title something a little bit more general because we're measuring all of the colony sizes, right? I realized that when I came over and did this one and we had three different colonies we were measuring. Therefore, this didn't 
this y-axis didn't just apply to one of them, it applied to the colony size in general. And the color coding tells you the location. Um, let me know if you've got any questions. This is the first step. Obviously, we'll then copy these with control C and control V. You'll copy them into your Google Doc from this Excel sheet. You'll find that Google Doc right in the assignment page. Um, we'll be working on this in class. Let me know if you've got any questions.